Good afternoon, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your midday market pulse update for Tuesday, July 6th. Okay, we've had some uh, pretty dramatic moves here this morning, and I want to bring you up to speed uh, what has happened. Remember, we talked about 10 year yields, we talked about TLT this morning, we talked about the different scenarios with the US dollar. Let's look at this 10 year yield here, TNX. Bottom dropped out. We're down almost seven basis points. We lost this key level here, one, uh, 1.40, uh, 140 on the 10 year, and we're trading 1.36. This 1.30 not much here as far as uh, support. I'll do a lot more detail work on this. The The line chart is not the best in the whole wide world to, to, I mean, zero in on technical levels, but just thumbnailing it, we got a little support here at 1.3, but then you can see there's not a lot down here till you get down to 1.15%. And I mean, once you get to that point, you're back testing 1% on the 10 year and what the bond market is saying is <clears throat> to put it bluntly you know there is no reflation there is no inflation the recovery will be weak uh, yields are going to be low for a long time and that's that's counter to the narrative that we <clears throat> have been operating under and which is you know reopening reflation inflation uh, uh, tapering all that kind of stuff <clears throat> would imply at least stable yields if not rising yields so this is this is the inverse of that and for that reason um, uh, it's a big problem I mean, it's a big problem on positioning, uh, et cetera. So let's take a look at it here. We talked about TLT this morning. Uh, got the big breakout here this morning, taking out the 10 year, taking out the downtrend line. And I mean, you can, you know, follow narratives all you want, but in terms of putting on trades, this is a long. We talked about it this morning. TLT is a long here. Um, now in the option market, I'm not seeing a ton of call buying. What I am seeing is a ton of call selling, and that may be a product of just sophisticated, tr uh, traders saying, you know, I don't know how high it's going to go, but I know it's not going back below the 200. So, you know, you can play that the way you want. I'm looking for a long entry here with a stop just below 145, uh, here at the 200. So anyways, that's a technical breakout and we have not been above the 200 in months and months and months, if not a year, you know, going back to August of last year is when yields started taking off. So, you know, we have not been above the 200 in a long, long time. And that in and of itself is noteworthy. Let's look at the indexes. We talked about this morning that you can treat a, uh, a rising channel or any channel as a uh, trading range, you know, from high to low. So now we had the breakout and now we have not held the top of this uh, channel. So now that breakout looks fake from last Friday. We had a little push this morning and they've, They've been selling ever since. So now on a technical basis, we've got a, a gap down here to fill and we've got the midpoint line. So unless we can recover this 432 area and get back above this uh, channel high, our next technical stop is the gap and then the midpoint down at 427. So looking at the 30 minute exploded view, you can see we were walking along the top 
And there's a little wiggle room. I mean, the way I've drawn it, whatever, you can say, oh, well, that was really inside. It doesn't make any difference. If you were at the channel high and you pulled away from it, your technical target is the midpoint, then the bottom of the channel. Well, we've blown through that. We've, we've blown through this gap. And now we are on the uh, wrong side of the 30 minute uptrend. So now we have just on the 30 minute chart, a, a technical sell signal. And well, actually I take that back. We have a technical sell signal right here from the standpoint of this short term time frame. Because why? Because we had a fake breakout and now we're back below. So here, the sell signal is we broke the channel low. So now the technical target, if we cannot recover this channel, is the next gap down at, uh, let's call it 428.75 right here. It's not a big gap. I would imagine if it got down there, it would fill and then come into this sh uh, support shelf at 428. And then that'll be a, a big, big level because, you know, if that breaks, then then you're down in here into the, uh, you know, 427s, 426s and 425s. So I don't like the look of that too much uh, here on the queues. We dropped below. We tagged this gap. Remember, uh, first touches of the gap. There's usually a bounce. We got that. But what I want to see is a recapture of the bottom of this uh, rising channel. And that would make me feel a lot more secure that, uh, that the cues are okay. Let's look at the 30 minute chart here. You can see that deep touch of this, uh, um, uh, top of the gap, excuse me. And you can see where the bottom of the channel comes in. So right now, all that's happened is we've touched the top of the channel here. We lost the channel midpoint and we've touched the lower part of the gap. And so now we've got to be hyper aware of where this gap is and where this uh, channel lies. Because if we fill the gap and keep going, our next stop will be down at 353. And then that becomes a really big uh, point on the chart because below that level, then we've got a relative air pocket over here that you can see. And we've got open gaps below that uh, need to be repaired. Um, no other way to describe it, but dev devastating move on IWM down five bucks. And we talked about these levels this morning. Uh, anything below this 229 pivot was a short. Kudos to you. If you got it, you're riding the gravy train right now. I would stay short. Uh, we blew right through the 50. I would have thought there would have been at least some kind of reaction there. Didn't even, didn't even slow down. It just blew right through it. Blew through this uh, 225. Came down. We've got a gap here between uh, 223.50 and 222. That's a big level right there, 222, because below that, we would have a lower low, and then, then that would most likely bring in more sellers below uh, 222. And if you go back on the uh, daily chart, you'll see uh, how important a level that is. And then, and then we're looking at 220, another gap, and then we've got a, a bigger or a deeper low back here that has not been retested yet. So, I mean, what's driving that? And we, we've, we've talked about it. We've, we've beat it like a dead horse. IWM is loaded with reopening trades, um, cyclicals, financials, energy, uh, uh, industrial names, you know, Heartland, small cap, U.S. focused recovery names. And if rates are falling and TLT is rising, IWM is not going to work. It's not going to work at all. So that's what's driving that trade. 
and you can see the you know the dramatic move here today and now coming into this gap at uh 22350 it looks like right here so if you're tactically trading this if you get a nice bounce off of this uh level put on your fibonacci retracement from from the high to the low wherever it bounces and then look for the fibonacci bounce to come up and fail and then come back down and fill this gap i mean that's the that's the technical playbook for iwm right now is you know wait for the bounce wait for that 50 percent halfback that that uh, fib retracement that we always talk about and then you got an objective level to shoot against for the uh the test i would i would really doubt that this thing comes down bounces and then goes right back up i think you're going to get a bounce and then you're going to get a a test of that low whether that low is here or here at the top of the gap it doesn't really matter i think you're going to come back down with a bounce and then a a test again of wherever this um this initial plunge takes place and then we can look for a bear flag and then a place to get short um facebook nice rising channel uh, but we lost the channel they've been selling it all morning they found some uh, support here at 348 i still like big cap tech i mean a falling rate environment is is positive for big cap tech as we've talked about but i would have thought and hoped that it would have uh held this channel but it didn't do that so now gotta hold 348 if you're long and 348 fails you gotta get out because if that fails then you're most likely looking at coming all the way back to 340 and you just you don't want to just sit through that um you know, is that disappointing? Sure, it's disappointing. We, you know, we went up here and then failed and, you know, broke the channel. But, I mean, that's trading. Uh, be disappointed at 348 rather than 340. Uh, Apple. Big, big breakout this morning. All the way up here to 343. And now they've brought that back and tagged 140. Remember, we talked about this morning. Um... If you got a back test of 140, buy it. That's working so far. So stick with that. Apple still looks pretty good. Uh, Tesla doesn't look that good at all. Why? Had the big uh, trading range. We lost that range. We said stay long against, you know, 665 in the top of that gap. Well, that gap is filled and now we're below. So from a technical standpoint, this could come back into 640. Um, without any you know problem whatsoever so if you were long here you should have been stopped out at some point probably right you know as uh price entered this uh gap uh microsoft lost the midpoint came down below i think it's still okay but from a technical standpoint you want to see this uh, midpoint of the channel recaptured here uh, let's let's call it 278 and then and then uh, you know disaster will be averted otherwise come down here to the bottom of the channel down towards 272 got a little baby gap here to fill I would still be a buyer of that if you got down to the bottom of the channel and you filled this gap that's very objective to try along there so uh, Microsoft remains strong a little bit of a wobble here but we said it's getting up to the top of the range anyways and to uh, you know possibly book some profits into that area so if you did then you should be looking for a long entry down in here a place to uh, reload long uh, Amazon incredible 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 move sent out a mid mid morning note on this monster move monster breakout uh, a year in consolidation now it's all about you know fine-tuning where you want to get long and 
you know, if you can get a pullback into uh, 3560, 3570, 3555, anywhere in there would be great. Otherwise, you're going to have to bite the bullet, get long, and then set a stop like at your halfback level, which would be in the, you know, the 3580 area. That's not optimum. It might be the it might be uh, the best you can get. So um, uh, let's just show the the uh, daily chart because it's like we've been waiting a year for this. So um, on the daily chart, what it's got to do is simply close above 3550, 3552, whatever you want to call it, and that's a that's your breakout. That's your technical long. And let's even look at the uh, weekly. So here you can see that big $600 range that we've been talking about. We've got the weekly PPO curling up. We've got the RSI never lost 50 during this whole time, which is a, a signal in and to itself. And now we got the breakout. So on a weekly basis, as long as you stay above 3,500, uh, that bodes really well for a strong advance that on a measured move basis would take you up to 4,000, 4,100, something like that. Um, Netflix, pretty good move, up uh, four bucks, eight tenths. Reaching for this 542.50, that's your next area of overhead resistance. Looks good, stay long. Google, little wobble here this morning, but all in all, still strong. I'd still stay long, Google. Um, SMH, uh, junk morning, lost this level, didn't quite make a complete back touch of this consolidation, and didn't quite reach this uh, uh, gap for a touch and bounce. Stopped a little bit shy, but now it's bouncing. Remember our, our trading protocols? Lose a level, you regain 258, it's a buy. You regain 259, it's a buy. You regain 260 and a half, it's a buy. You break out to new highs above 262, and it's a buy. So if this is it, and we recapture these levels on the way up, the bulls will regain control. So what on any of these stocks, if you see price drop below and then recapture, that's always a short-term buy, so keep that in mind. Um, AMD uh, not having a good day, off 1.1%, 1 1 back touching the midpoint of this one hour rising channel needs to hold that uh i got out of my i got out of my calls um uh this morning so now i'm watching it i'm still bullish but i'm not gonna watch weekly calls disintegrate on some kind of down move just uh you know exit watch carefully see how price behaves and if it recaptures certain levels you know get back long again so I want to be really uh, tactical, flexible, fluid right here because, as I was saying in the trading room, falling yields is great. Collapsing yields is not so great because it calls into question a lot of stuff. And although that's a generally a tailwind for mega cap tech, and I still think it is, you know, as we've seen, they don't need a reason to pull the rug. So being a little bit cautious here, not as uh, uh, crazy long as I was, you know, six hours ago. Uh, CrowdStrike, uh, having a good day so far. Let's update this chart, see where we're at. Yeah, up 4%. A lot of you are in this. We talked about rolling up last week. You're in good shape, stay long. CVS, not so good. You should be stopped out of this trade as we dropped below the 50. That shouldn't have happened. 
So if you were long on that, it did not work. Get out. I'm out. So, you know, if it recaptures 83 or the bottom of this channel, then we can take a look at it. KRE, financials, falling rates is death to financials. KRE, regional banking ETF. You get a break below this uh, 6350 area. I can almost guarantee you a tag of the 200 down here at uh, 5950. That might be a decent trade to take. We had a fail back test of the 50 and now rolling over again. If this level of support breaks at uh, 6350, it's going lower. So um, I like a short on KRE more than XLF. Why? Because um, in XLF, you got insurance companies, you got all kind of, you know, different financial instruments in there. And the most direct play on interest rates and in financials is going to be banks. And uh, even on the money centers, they got all these other components like, tr you know, trading and M&A and all that kind of stuff. I think you're going to get the biggest bang for the buck if you're trying to short banks is uh, on KRE. Um, PayPal, tread and water. Make sure you've rolled up. Make sure you've gotten paid for this move here that we got. Um, and you can decide whether to get out or stay long. But we're above the eight days, so hard to get too bearish on that. And um, I think Pins was doing okay. I think Snap was doing okay the last time I looked. Let me, um, let me jump over here to oil because I wanted to show you something. You know, we have talked about being bullish oil, not gas. Had a bad reversal this morning. Whenever you see something open up, you know, one and a half, two percent, and then reverse down for two percent, that's a four percent move. That's a four percent reversal. And that is never, never, never a good sign. And so now, we had this nice rising trend in USO, which is the ETF that tracks oil futures. So we broke trend. That's a sell signal. This is the, the next line in the sand where we're at right now. You see a break below, you know, 49.25, 49.50 right in this area. You're going to be back in the 47s, the 47.75 uh, area. There's a big void right here. And then you can see this large volume over price support bar down at 47.75. You don't want to be hanging out in oil long. If this breaks, you say, okay, I got caught here. Been riding this wave. Now, you know, I got caught below the trend line. Like I said, it's a sell in and of itself. You got to get out. You got to get out if we lose this uh, 4950 area. We're already down 2.8%. You lose that, you, sh you could see a fast flush down here to 4775 that could only take a day or two. So be, be cognizant of that. So anyways, a lot of stuff happening. A lot of it being driven by rates and the reversal in energy. Be really, really careful of those reopening names. Oh, I closed Cleveland Cliffs, CLF. Why? It didn't work. Um, and the reopening names aren't working. So, you know, I closed that. Uh, I think I, yeah, I definitely took a loss on that. I'm not sure how much, but I'm out of that. So, um, I've become really, really tactical here. Um, not as long as I was. You know, I want to see how this thing reacts. And, you know, it only takes five seconds to buy, rebuy something back that, you know, averted 
danger. And so that's, that's the way I'm approaching it. So anyhow, I hope you like the analysis. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, the alarm bell. I'll keep you posted with the levels and the observations that I see. Hopefully, at a bare minimum, keep you out of real trouble on some of these levels and then on the more positive side, uh, make money along the way. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how we've nailed the, the fat man names going up. And if you've been along for that ride, I hope you've participated in it. So um, hit the alarm bell, uh, jump over in the show notes. You'll see places to register for all my content and links to the blog site as well. If you register for the content, you'll get all my midday notes, everything right to your email box, and that will be a convenient place for you to uh, uh, get the content without hunting all over social media. So thank you very much. Uh, long time viewers, thanks for the support, and good luck in your trading this afternoon. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Power Compass. Talk to you next time.